Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to Case Notes from the Field. I'm Ernesto Bejarano with Social Work Mentor. And today we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Ignacio Pacheco of Social Work Tech. So we're going to have a lot to learn about each other and, and have some fun today. So enjoy this podcast of Case Notes from the Field. All right, everybody. So as I mentioned, our guest today is Mr. Ignacio Pacheco. He is kind of local to me here, but far enough away that, that you know, we have had some different experiences. And so we're going to learn about him today, learn about his social work journey and see if there's any fun and interesting things that we can learn and, and take for, for ourselves going forward. So let's... Uh, Join up here, Mr. Pacheco. Do you prefer Ignacio, Nacho? What do you prefer? Uh, Ignacio is fine. I like Ignacio. Ignacio professionally, it, it just helps. Uh, uh, it, it just helps with uh, not having like awkward conversations <laughs> with clients about like, don't call me Nacho. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Actually, no, okay, it's funny so though cool. that you should name because like uh, I used to work at Costco like before social work. Um, that was like my part-time gig, like I was as I was getting through school, and I got into a fight with my one of my supervisors because uh, I wanted to go by Iggy I G G Y, right? For you know, uh -huh. short for Ignacio. And the only reason for that is because man, it's just like when people butcher my name, I'm just like that. I like I don't like that at all. So I'd rather have them call me <laughs> Iggy than Ignacio, Ignacio. You know, just like yeah. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> all right. Well. For me, you're going to be Ignacio today for the next right however, however amount of time we're here. <laughs> so welcome again. I, I mentioned in the little intro that, um, you know, I've known you or I haven't known you, but I've kind of seen your work from afar over the years now. Um, I think you and I both have, we have a an interest or a passion in kind of bringing together the, the worlds of social work and technology to some extent. And so I think that's how, that's at least how I've known about your work and about you. Um, but I don't know too much more about you or your background or your history other than what we talked about before this podcast. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you maybe you just want to start and share whatever you feel comfortable okay. with in terms of where you came from, what your background is, eventually getting to yeah. your entire social work journey. Okay. Uh, well, again, my name is Ignacio Pacheco. Um, I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, I grew up in a place called San Carlos. It's right in the middle of the peninsula. Mm. Um, so a lot of people don't know, unless you're from the Bay Area, a lot of people don't know where that is. Um, so like Redwood City is like the closest landmark uh, uh, climate best by government test is their motto. But San Carlos is the city of good living. Um, I grew up like in a very, you know, looking back on it, um, you know, as forced to do by some, uh, you know, papers that we do like in, in grad school. Uh, mm -hmm. I grew up pretty privileged. Um and what I mean by that is that, you know, uh, safe neighborhoods, functioning library, not have to, not worried about, like, having to get jumped on my way home from school kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that, that's, you know, one of the cool things about me growing up. The only thing about me growing up is uh, San Carlos is very, very white. Um, and so, like, I was one of a couple of, like, brown kids or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um and so sometimes that created some issues uh Robert city that was like very very mexican or whatever right and so mm -hmm. um i think i might have fit in a little bit better um like one of the consequences of going to school where i did is um like I, this is really embarrassing but like i didn't know who cesar chavez was until like my second year of college mm -hmm. um so it's just like one of those things where like i grew up in that kind of environment though so it's just you know so that's a little bit about like how kind of how I grew up and and where I'm from. I live in Monterey, California, which is also like suburban. It's much more culturally diverse over here um and safe. And we got functioning mm -hmm. libraries in spite of the lockdown. <laughs> you know, um I don't you know, I don't worry about um getting jumped on my way to like the store or anything like that, you know, like walking mm -hmm. distance or anything like that. So, you know, in clean air, which uh, you know, comes in helpful, you know like when half of California is burning down the, the ocean's like out my window. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. nice. So do, yeah. do you think growing up in San Carlos and kind of sounds like straddling that maybe kind of two little um, uh, cultures or societies there with Redwood city and San Carlos, do you think there was anything specific or even a general thing that, that maybe in those early formative years kind of started steering you towards social work or, or, can you think of anything that consciously 
hit you in those times? Well, not, not necessarily. I mean, like, you know, growing up, I wasn't like super happy because again, you know, with like being like one of like a couple of brown kids kind of thing. Um, it just, like, I didn't really get along with the brown kids and I didn't really like get along with the white kids. It's not that we didn't get along. Like there was cultural <laughs> conflict. It's just like, I always felt like kind of like an outsider um, and kind of like reflecting back on that now as a social worker is just like, you know, like when we're helping out like our, you know, our clients that might need some empowerment or might need to navigate the system, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like being in the kind of like isolated outsider type of situation has helped me, you know, like, like I appreciate that. And I, uh, you know, I, I know what that's like and, uh, you know, just, just when somebody's like in a messed up situation where where they feel like all alone and like can't, you know, like nobody else would understand them kind of thing. It's just like, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> nothing get too dark. That's yeah. like, that's my childhood right there. <laughs> it's just, yeah. You know. it's, I mean, I think that's a common experience for a lot of us that, you know, have obviously very diverse backgrounds. But I think a lot of social workers have something that we can draw from that we had in our past experiences. I was uh, chatting online in a different forum with kind of a younger person who's looking to go into social work. And she was saying how um, she, I think she, she was telling me about, she was telling me about a mistake that she made shoplifting and she was concerned that that was going to, um, you know, impact her ability to move forward in social work. And I was like, well, you know, that that probably was a mistake, but a lot of us have stuff and, and, you know, that's kind of why we um, encourage social workers to work on themselves throughout their careers and, you know, yeah. have, go to therapy and do all the things we need to do to take care of ourselves. Um, wow. So, yeah, so it's interesting just the, to hear where people came from and how they can apply that to to their work and, and what they do now. So so yeah. you grew up in, in San Carlos here in, in the Bay Area. And um, at some point, you you decided you were going to go to school. I'm assuming to to college. <laughs> um, did you did you go into it knowing you were going to as a social work major? Did you go in, or did you kind of find it in your educational journey? Okay, so I want to tell you, I'm, I'm a very proud alumnus of all the educational institutions I attended. I went to CSU Monterey Bay, which is a uh, home of the Otter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but, but um yeah the, the, it's a cool mascot i like otters right um a mm-hmm. couple of things with that number one um i i graduated in 2001 in like august 2001 and then 9 mm-hmm. happened and csu mm-hmm. monterey bay is like an old army base the former fort Ord. Mm-hmm. so it just like became alive with action i just like it just like really haunted you were there like, during that time yeah, heck yeah, man. This is like oh, before wow. they went to like the color scheme or whatever, right? Or like, red, yeah, it, you orange, know, yeah. red. All yeah, it, w- it was like uh, threat level Delta. I was like, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> were you living yeah, on was, campus or were you living? I was at the campus. dorm, man, which like, the room was, was like, the old, like, uh, like inpatient mental facility or whatever. That was the room, right? It just, it, you know, it was, it was basically like a brick building that was, uh, you know, painted over and hopefully, um, you know, I didn't get too much asbestos, but, uh, mm. <laughs> but it was no, but when I went, when I went, you know, since Monterey Bay back then, um, it was a new college it was founded in 1994. Like Bill Clinton was there for its founding. Cause, uh, he's friends with Jimmy Panetta, who used to be our, you know, like the defense secretary under Obama. Mm-hmm. Um, Watch your feet. I'm um, name dropping. <laughs> but anyways, so so so, so anyways, so so back then though, you know, it was like a new school. Um, the only thing about it is that it a, a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of stuff that you took like in undergrad or whatever, or lower division or whatever, didn't transfer out. So it was one of those things mm. when you get there, like you're kind of stuck. The other thing I kind of mm. noticed is that uh, for people that aren't, you know, UC Davis, UCLA bound, uh, USC bound, um, you know, that, that, that was like your C average type of student or whatever, like trying to figure out what they want to do for the rest of their life. And for me, it was just like, I was always told by my folks, it's just like, you need a degree, you need a degree, you need a degree. I was like, okay, I'll go get a degree. You know, like, you know. And, <laughs> and so, 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 so at that time, I might have missed it. Did you know, though, already when you were there that, that you were a social work major or what did you go in as? No, I, I just went in as, uh, <laughs> I went in as business because CSU, oh. yeah, well, I, I declared business or whatever. So I took like the, the lower division business classes, which uh, at CSU mm-hmm. Monterey Bay was called, uh, what's it called? Um, management and international entrepreneurship. I'm like, <laughs> and it's fancy. So, 
yeah, it was, you know, like, I'm a good writer, so that, you know, it was cool like that, but it's just, like, it wasn't until, like, the second year at CSUMB that I did something called service learning um, mm-hmm. that I, you know, that it was just like, oh, I like this, you know? Um, and service learning for CSUMB Monterey Bay, I think for a lot of other state schools, it's now a requirement, but back in the day, you know, you were forced to do service learning. So mm-hmm. um, I remember I was placed out of school and I was teaching like little kids art. And I was like, okay, this, you know, like, I don't want to be a teacher, but this is kind of cool. I like this, you know, mm-hmm. you know, um, teaching them art, you know, playing a little guitar, doing this, that would have you encouraging them. And I was like, okay, this feels warm and fuzzy. I like this. What's the major at my school that's like this. Mm-hmm. And so um, it wasn't so much social work. The It's collaborative health and human services. So they got like the collaborative health, which is like basically like public health and human services, which is your social work. Um, mm-hmm. And they smushed them together. And that was the major. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh i don't and like looking back on it now uh council of social work education you have to jump through all their hoops to get accredited as a social work major mm-hmm. so i don't i think that was part of like the whole fresh um you know like you know brand new school um vibe going on where it's just like they didn't yeah. get the accreditation quite yet they do have it for like the msw program down here so mm-hmm. that's pretty cool but uh yeah so uh, so nice. um yeah so that was um, that was my first taste of like, you know, serving others and helping others and, you know, not out of like piety or, or, or you know, self congratulation or anything like that, that, that I wanted to do it. It's just one of those things that like, it just, you know, I want a livelihood that makes me feel good. And, and, you know, when I go home, you know, mm-hmm. retail is not it retails for some people, people, you know, some people do retail all happy, but it's just like, you know, or business, you know, that they're good at like loans and stuff like money mm-hmm. and all that. But it's just like with me, you know, I do like working with humans and help, you know, trying to help out wherever I can. So, yeah, I, that's to me, that's always interesting to hear people's past because I found for myself and, and, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, it's it's a similar theme. Some people know, like, off the bat, they're social workers, and, and that's what they choose. But for a lot of us, it sounds like maybe your experience, and for sure it was my experience, that I don't, I didn't search for social work and social work. I didn't know that that's what I wanted to do, but it's kind of like social work found me. And then it's, when it found me, it just felt right. Like, that, it felt, I had, I had very different plans. I was a wildlife major to start off with so similar to you it's not really i don't think what was planned but you know (laughs) like i said as things as life continued in those early college years or whatever it it found me and it felt right and so yeah and so that's interesting so oh go ahead were you gonna say something yeah no just like you know i don't know if i'm gonna continue on with like my journey yeah sure go ahead so so i did service learning or whatever and and you know and, and then i um uh, you know, like I said, I just like, like, I guess it's going to be my major or whatever, right? And between like my like lower division and upper division year, um, <laughs> I got a job as a union organizer. Um, mm. And and that was pretty cool. Um, S- Service Employees International Union flew me from uh, San Francisco to Detroit. And man, I don't even ever, ever been lost in Oakland after dark, man, but that doesn't hold a candle to Detroit, Michigan, you know, mm-hmm. like in the daylight, man. It was just, you know, if you're not used to that type of urban environment, it was just, it was just, you know, it was wow. Um, but I, I really liked it. And um, I, I got to, <laughs> I, I got to go around, you know, different parts of Detroit, you know, like in Detroit city, um, apartments, mm-hmm. houses, et cetera, um, mm-hmm. and talk to people. And I, I didn't know that I was building my social work skills at that point, but it's just like, you know, I, I you know, to get people to sign like this little union card or whatever, right? Like, right. you know, you had to talk to them about the union and like why it would benefit them. And this is for like home care providers. So people taking care of like, you know, parents or ch- their own children or like an elderly neighbor that needs home care, you know, services. Mm-hmm. So I just remember that, um, you know, doing... <laughs> going on home visits, right? Like, you know, Mm -hmm. basically going down my list of people to visit, right? And then um, when it, um, I I, I started like talking to people and listening to their stories and people really responded well to when you listen to them and their struggle. And then like, kind of like framing it back to like, why it would be helpful for them to join this union that, you know, would look at, you know, you hope, you know, would look out for the Mm -hmm. interests, you know? And so Mm -hmm. I was very proud of that work that I did. It was like for two or three months or whatever. And um, did you say and, this, this was, I might've probably missed it. Did you say this was while you were still in school or after you yeah, had, this is during the summer between like year two and three of, uh, okay. you know, okay. be, you know, school. So, uh-huh. okay. you know, and, and, and you know, <laughs> 
I don't know anybody that does CSU and B, but hopefully things have changed for the better. But I did CSU and B. It was a four year school. Did it in six. You know what I mean? I got my I got my uh-huh. paper. You know, but but <laughs> I took I took a little bit of my time and I had some stuff going on. But yeah. Yeah. Well, social workers want to make sure we do things right, even if it uh, takes a little more time, but we do it right. (laughs) (laughs) No, man, I think I I, I like you CBTing me, man. Can we use some motivational? I'm just kidding. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, But so, um, uh, so some people, I, I assume that will see this and hear this, are are from that area. So I think this may resonate with some people, you know, just in terms of the the urban environment there. And in, in, yeah. it's a lot different what we think of here. And we're both from California. And then when we go into these other either Midwest or I, like, yeah. I guess as they say Rust Belt or East Coast, yeah. like it's urban situations and 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 the dynamics are very different in those places and so so um i think that's going to resonate one of the things too yeah one of the things too with csu and b or whatever is like they they like when it was founded or this is like their propaganda so like and i'm probably getting it wrong but one of the one of like their visions was to like serve the community so i didn't notice it i notice it now in retrospect and i notice it now also you know like in the present um like looking at folks or whatever you know that that are at csu and b or going to csu and b but um no uh, it, it does like a lot of farm worker folk, right. That come to the States with hopes and dreams and dreams for their kids or whatever, right. Like their kids are going, going to CCMB, you know, and getting their first, you know, mm-hmm. being first generation, you know, to get their degrees and all that. So I think that's pretty mm-hmm. cool and all that. So I've met a, quite a couple of folks that have done that. And I, I, I think it's nice. killer. I like that. So, you so know. did you feel that um, your experience doing that when, when, while you were doing that, the school that you had up until that point, had it prepared you for that type of work or did it feel like you were getting a lot of the learning on the ground in in real time? How how prepared were you? So going back to the whole thing about like CSU and B like and C students back in the day, one of the things I found back then was that uh, your degree is what you make of it, right? (laughs) Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, you can do like an art major and just like do like the bare minimum and still get your degree or you can do like amazing, beautiful work, you know, and get your degree. Right. Um, and, but <laughs> the major that I chose, which is collaborative health and human services, has like something like 13 major learning outcomes, like nonprofit management, financial management, I think financial management, um, research methods, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And it's just like mm-hmm. like the goal for for like beating you into shape is so that you can have a good entry level job once you get out of there, which I did, you know, like I didn't, um, for example, like we had, um, one of them was like financial management or whatever. Right. And so I learned what a 403B or 501C3 is, excuse me, mm-hmm. for <laughs> 501C3 and, uh, you know, uh, you know, learn how boards run and the importance of boards and governance and, you know, all that fun stuff. So, you know, that's mm-hmm. the kind of stuff I got from like the undergrad stuff and, you know, it's still stuck with me. <laughs> now oh, that's it that's awesome i mean I, i've had to i've also learned that stuff but way later in life like separate from any schooling or professional i've had to be like kind of on my own to, to so to hear that you were able to get that kind of yeah. ex- experience and knowledge through yeah. your, your curriculum and yeah. in the kind of within the perspective of of social work is is awesome that's a sounds like a great opportunity yeah. there yeah, and like the thing about it too is just like you know, like a social, like a you know BSW type of placement. Uh, you know, we had field placement too. So mm-hmm. I, the first one that I had was working for like a, a Catholic charities in East Salinas, which again, you know, it's like I'm not, I wasn't used to East Salinas back then, mm-hmm. um, but you know, um, helping folks that are applying for citizenship or uh, residency or what have you. So you know, I made mm-hmm. a little pamphlet back then with my little you know. Microsoft 2003 skills, you know, um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, so, so I made, made a little pamphlet that I left there, you know, there. And then, um, for my last year, um, I, I, my placement was at the Monterey County Sheriff's Department, the juvenile probation division. And that was cool. I was like, oh, okay, I might want to be a mm-hmm. probation officer. Um, I'm glad I, I'm glad my career did not go that way, but <laughs> 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 yeah. And then also too, you know, I mentioned at the start of the thing, you know, I was also working Costco and uh, you know, that that was, you know, that was cool that, you know, paid the bills and the rent and, and all that fun stuff. And mm-hmm. you know, um so so you know, I had a quite the rounded experience, you know, uh, in my undergrad. So 
<laughs> nice, nice. So yeah, yeah, so it does sound like uh, their uh, CSUMB really provided you with a, a nice foundation for for you know what you were gonna want to get into, and and pretty you know it's, it's interesting. I haven't heard too many programs that that work in the way that you're describing, and so yeah. um, that's interesting. So then, so now you mentioned that um, as you moved into as you begin to move into your professional career now, and what. What was kind of your, because you said that this this program prepared you for getting a, a good job right upon uh-huh. upon leaving. So what was this kind of your first entry then into the professional world and, and how, kind of how did that go for you? Okay, well, my, my, my first and only gig <laughs> was two years working <laughs> at a local adoption slash foster care program mm-hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was all right. I mean, like, like, again, it was just like home visits and case managing and treatment plan and all that and billing and, and it was, it was all right. I, I, um, a couple of like LCSWs at this agency, LMFTs, and didn't quite understand the work that they did or, or how it worked or whatever, because it was just like stuck in my own bubble. But all mm-hmm. I know is that, you know, like I was told, you know, one of the last things that, you know, in, in my last semester of undergrad that I was told by uh, Dr. Simmons, I don't know if he's retired or if he's still teaching, but uh, he's like, you guys need to go get your union card. I'm like, union card? He's like, yeah, you guys need to go get your MSW after this. I'm like, so that resonated with me. I was like, okay. So <laughs> while at my entry-level job, you know, I thought I did a pretty good job. I used my Spanish-speaking skills and, you know, hablo, mu- hablo muy pocho, bro. Anyways. No, I don't talk like <laughs> <laughs> a little Spanish, a little Spanish humor there for those who who don't know. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. No, but like, no, I was able to use like my my my. I was able to use my Spanish speaking abilities to help out folks, and you know, and folks appreciate it when you try, you know, to speak their language and all yeah. that. And so, you know, um, I think I've gotten a lot better. I can do clinical social work with, with my Spanish and all that. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so I was able, you know, I was able to. Um, I basically case managed and burned out. And it was just one of those things where like, I wasn't going to get a raise and I didn't want to change about jobs. And I'm just like, I guess it's time for me to go to school, <laughs> you know, go back to school. <laughs> uh-huh. So that's what I did. I, um, every good social worker that I've ever met, you know, kind, competent, rational, um, strong ethical foundation, you know, like when I like, you know, like, where'd you get your degree? Like San Jose state, like almost to a T everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. you know so i was like i guess i'm going there so i i wrote like the most fabulous um paper you know eight page you know personal statement that i could write i i had the grades and i took the human biology course that you need to i applied i got in and you know it was two years of really freaking hard work man but uh you know i don't uh-huh. regret it one bit you know and and so then after upon completion of the program there at san jose state were did did you really notice that that opened up the opportunities for you and and kind of gave you a lot more choices or or what was your experience w- once you had your MSW? Okay, well, getting to the MSW, what I got um, was a lot of. Ex- I, I had two placements. One was a uh, YWCA, um, and that program was you know like helped me with like doing psychotherapy. I don't know what the heck I was doing. Uh, you know, I, I, I try. <laughs> I mean, like have a conversation for an hour with somebody or whatever. Right. And it's just like, mm-hmm. okay. And then here's CBT, like use that. I'm like, okay. You know, it's just like, <laughs> you know, it's just like when you're green, you're green. Right. You know, and you do yeah. the best that you, you know, you do the best you can with that and try not to break too many eggs while making an omelet kind of thing. You know, that, that what you just said is so profound <laughs> when you're green, you're green and try not to break too many eggs when you're, tra- I mean, that's that really, I wish someone uh, would have told me that back in those days because yeah. it, well, tr- trying to make the- a mess when you're making your omelet, you're going to have to crack a few eggs, right? Yeah, it's with all just- the pressure, with all the pressure that social work can bring, just yeah. the work that you have to do, it's like an added layer of pressure when you're yeah. feeling kind of incompetent and unsure of yourself yeah. and maybe not getting the supervision that you need or support. And so if, t- if I would have just had that awareness of just like, it's okay, do the best you can do, you'll get this, that, that would have been so helpful in well, those days. If- if you like the profound nature of what I just said, man, here's one thing I tell like <laughs> interns or whatever, right? It's just like, you ever go to the gym and work out most, you know, your muscles or whatever. And the next day you're sore. Like personally, I hate that. I hate feeling sore or whatever. Like I hate having to pop an Advil or whatever, but out of, out of, out of great discomfort comes growth. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, That's true. It, it, yeah. That's true. And, and it's just one of those things where like, you know, like I had a lot of discomfort in, you know, my, my <laughs> MSW program, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. have any, you know, like, 
I had like the best field instructor. Her name is Barbara Watkins. If she's watching, what's up, Holla? Uh, Common anyways. friend of ours. Yes. <laughs> no, but she no. Um, she was super awesome. cool. Yeah, she's super awesome. I didn't have no beef at my freaking placement. You know, I it mm. was it was cool. It was awesome, and um, I you know I learned I learned a lot. And you know, when, lot, when you don't know anything about trauma or depression or anything like that, it's just like whoa, man, like Pandora's uh-huh. box opening. And uh, <laughs> no, man, I mean, like I'm serious, man. It's just like you know, uh, you know, I, I've been uh, you know I've been in therapy on and off for like the last like 15, 20 years ish. Yeah. Yeah. About 15, mm-hmm. about 15, 20 years or whatever. Right. You know, you know, started at the health center at undergrad and, and through the present. Right. Mm-hmm. But, um, what, you know, I, I want to go get help from like the San Jose state, like, you know, mental health or whatever. And that, you know, mm-hmm. that was all right. And then I saw, started seeing a like personal therapist who specialized in trauma. And then I learned mm-hmm. about like what vicarious trauma is. And when, you know, for, for those, for those people that are green and, or not, I'm sorry, let me try that again. For those folks that don't know what vicarious it's trauma is, is you know, you're in session with a client, a client drops a bomb of like, you know, like, like the most effed up, th- you know, things you may have ever heard or whatever. Right. And then like, mm-hmm. you, you know, if you have good boundaries, you try to let the, the client own that and it's theirs and you don't internalize that man, but sometimes you catch Absolutely. shrapnel. Yeah, yeah. You catch shrapnel sometimes. And it's just like, Oh mm-hmm. my God, what, you know, like, what do I do with this? You know? So, yeah. you know, I, 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 I sought out the support that I needed to, all- Stay yeah, I kind of, I kind of find that it's even almost insidious in 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 a way because when you're new, when you're quote unquote green or inexperienced, mm-hmm. that it, you know it's very clear when you get hit with that. It's 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 something that you know you can identify and and maybe you don't know what to do with it yet, but it's the contrast between what you had expected to hear and work with and what you get slapped in the face with is very clear. When you're yeah. more experienced, I found that. I don't know if it's you get numb to the work or or you become desensitized, but those things that in the early days might have slapped you in the face and made you more more prone to actually proactively work on those issues and, and how it impacts you. Yeah. We kind of, I've seen it, I know myself included, some people kind of just, it, it, it just kind of is a dull place. And if you're not very... Um, you know, if you're not being conscious about how you're taking care of yourself. So that's why it's it's important, I think, more so in some ways for experienced social workers to take care of themselves because we, like I said, I think it's a desensitization that we just let that just enter us and we don't do anything with it. I think it's just one of, I think one of those things that's more like compartmentalizing. Like, okay, yeah, I've been through this Yeah, before. that's true. You know, I, I it, you know, it's not so much that I'm numb to it or whatever. It's just like, okay, this is a messed up mm-hmm. situation, so I got to use all my social work skills to stay in the present. You know, mm-hmm. to feel my feet on the ground, to listen to what they're saying, to like, mm-hmm. like, and which technique am I going to use right now to like either normalize or validate or mm-hmm. this, that, what have you, um, and get through the session. You know, and, and, and you know, a, a client will peak in the session, and as close to the end, you want to you know help them get to a better place, or have a, help them you know have some sort of skill or closure on what they just recounted to you. Mm-hmm. But the thing about the thing with that man is just like even now, I think it's important for lots of you know if you don't have a social work crew, you know, build one. <laughs> Oh, like, yeah. You know what, whether, whether it be like old supervisors or like homies that you work with or what have you, it's just like one of those mm-hmm. things where like, you know, that's super important, right? Because it's just one, mm-hmm. one of those things where like, that's you know, not talking shop to disparage the clients, not you know, not gossiping, not violating HIPAA or whatever, right? But just you know, somebody that's also been there, you know, uh-huh. that, that knows, you know. You know, like when the bomb goes off or whatever, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, I've been there and I know how to like tend to you or not tend to you, but like, you know, help you through this kind of thing. You know, I think that support is super important, right? You know, not just for that, but like administrative stuff too, that, like, you know, like work yeah. problems and all, you know, and all yeah. that kind of stuff, you know, like a good support system is good, you know, is good to have because like, you know, you, you a lot of times that, you know, it's just like, you can't bring that home, you know, you mm-hmm. can't bring that, you know, you can't bring that home. <clears throat> I, I don't know about you, you know, um, Edit this out if you if you don't get. I don't know about you, but like you know, with like I, I think your partner or your wife is a, a social worker or whatever, right? But like when your partner's not a social worker or whatever, right? It's just like that kind of stuff can just be startling, you know. It's just yeah, like- and if, I think you make a great point. Is that as you become more experienced, you're more. And my background is not so much in in a ther from a therapeutic um, perspective. I, I've done some other work in in my in my career, but you know, I've done enough to be in situations where 
you know, I've have had to compartmentalize things as I've worked work with clients and work with individuals and families, but you still have to do something with that compartmentalized information or 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 you know whatever you're holding. Yeah. And so it's exactly like you're saying, if you can put together a, a team or or a, a support system for wow. yourself, it's you you won't make it through. I mean. You will burn out and you most likely are not going to make it through unless you put something in place, therapist, crew, whatever it is. Yeah. And the other thing too, man, is just like when you're working, you know, like let's say with families or whatever, right. And you have like, uh, you know, a mom that uses that junk leg, you know, like, you know, like a sandal or whatever, like as their disciplinary tool or whatever. Mm. Right. You know, like internally I'm, do, you know, I'm like, lady, what the heck are you doing? Right. <laughs> but like externally, I got to do like, the psychoeducation about like how this is now like a, you know in California you know this yeah. is you know reportable as child abuse and I'm gonna have to do that now and you know there are other ways you know or like would you be willing to do parenting classes etc cetera, etc cetera, whatever right but like that's one example of like internally you know it's just like I'm opposed to the chancla right like when people like romanticize it like there's Latino memes or whatever right that use la chancla as like oh haha or whatever right like I hate it you know like as a mm-hmm. disciplinary tool I hate it mm-hmm. I hate la chancla <laughs> mm-hmm. but but it's just one of those things where like internally like you're doing these gymnastics of like having like a professional veneer you know having you know like like trying to understand culturally like why that chunk is used kind of thing or whatever, right? Understanding like, you know, like psychosocial elements, like this is probably how they were disciplined, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it, it's just like, you know, what, that's just exhausting sometimes. Right? It, it's super exhausting. And you layer in all these other, you know, historical yeah. trauma and, and yeah. you know, vicar- all the different pieces of the puzzle that come into play it's it's, i always found it amazing after you know running a group or you know doing some even a home visit or something and you've come out of it sometimes just feeling so exhausted so shook and but literally just like exhausted and and i would at first you know having come from a early years of more manual labor kind of stuff. And then like, I kind of even felt ashamed. Like, why am I so tired? All I did was talk to this person, but you know, the more I I learned about the process and myself, obviously the more I understood why that's so draining, but you know, it's something that so for new social workers or or young social workers that are watching this, it's something to be very conscious of because it's like a, like a silent little thing that can weigh on you and, and, you don't realize it until you kind of break down or have some event that, you know, you don't want yeah. to get to. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have two thoughts on that. Right. Like, number one is that like as exhausting as it can be, you know, I love it. You love it. That's why we yeah. keep doing it. Right. Yeah. You know, and then the second thing that I have, you know, the other thought that I have about like what you just said is just like around the guilt or whatever, right? Like, you know, we do these mental gymnastics, right? We use all our training, all our experience, all our like pre-licensure and post-licensure work and all our CEU work and this, that, what have you to better our clients, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, there are times, man, where like I'd be driving, man, like like to work, right? I work um, at a very rural South Monterey County uh, office, right? But along the way, right, is like all the lettuce, you know, that is grown, for, you know, like most of the lettuce, like that's grown here half of the year and fields and broccoli and cauliflower and all that stuff, you know, that grows in the Salinas Valley, right? And mm. so like seeing folks like hunched over, man, and like freaking like working or whatever, right? And like, you know, like, you know, like dealing with pesticides and now like with COVID and, you know, during the summer, it was like the smoke from like the fires, man. It's just like, you know, I feel guilty about that too, man. But at mm-hmm. the same time too, though, it's just like also remembering it's like, well, I have a lot of farm workers on my case load and, you know, helping with being like the first face that they see, cara de nopal, right? Like cactus face, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> you know, that they, that, they, that they see, you know, like, like now I'm surprised with how many folks like know how to use Zoom, right? But like mm-hmm. the first face that they see or the first, you know, like voice that they hear with like the mental health stuff. And, you know, it's, it's a privilege to be able to talk about mental health, talk about wellness, talk about, you know, mind, body, spirit, you know, and, and mm-hmm. all of that and help folks you know, like get to a better place that maybe have never thought about it, you know? So, so yeah, that, that, that is, that is, that is quite the privilege and it uh, helps to alleviate that, that, you know, the guilt from not doing that physical labor, you know, like I said, like, like you said, you know, it's like that mental labor that is very exhausting, you know, but mm-hmm. that's why we take care of uh, ourselves yeah. and self-care and all that. So, yeah. And I mean, and obviously the impact of, I mean, any job has, has honor and, and, you know, has value, but the impact, I think of the impact of the work that I did previously, manual labor, like it, it, 
probably didn't have the the at least for me didn't have the same impact as the work that I've done with individuals and families and so you know although I might have felt guilty for not thinking that it was real work if I really sit back and think about it I you know it helps me to understand that the impact of my efforts has goes you know a long way generations down the line the work that I've done in this field will have some impact as opposed to other yeah. stuff that I've done but I, I'm I'm super intrigued and interested just by this this time that we're in and the, and the work that you are doing because you know as you mentioned zoom and this huge transition that we've had to make in the world <laughs> to to live and the population that you work with, I, I, you kind of went into a little bit, but is there anything that kind of stands out in terms of the dynamics of how social work looks when you're working with populations that are either not either have a stigma towards the work itself and, and how they think about what you're trying to do and the additional challenge of technology and and all the other stuff and of course there's that little pandemic that you know we're yeah. dealing with so what's so your thoughts on that th okay so here, here are my thoughts on that number one uh, the one good thing that came out of the pandemic man is <laughs> meetings that could not be held from afar through like you know like skype you know pre-zoom or or like facetime or whatever right can now all of a sudden like be done over the internet which is great because that saves me like travel time to go to like a venue, sit down, you know, do the CEU class and then, you know, travel to my next thing. It's just like, no, I can do it. You know, I, I go to my office, I log into Zoom, I do my Zoom class and then like I'm done with it and I don't have to travel like another two hours, you know, to get to my, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have to travel like, an, you know, like the 80 minutes it takes to get from the peninsula to South Monterey County, right? So that I, I absolutely love that. Um, on my website, I developed like a how to use Zoom guide in both English and Spanish that I try to make it like as easy and as, you know, picturesque as possible mm -hmm. and and the thing about that is just um at the start of i made it at the start of the pandemic so almost a year ago and i was just like I'm, i was hoping that um you know it would be helpful for folks to to understand how to use zoom you know if they weren't familiar and it's just like it amazes me like <sighs> You know, we, we try to meet the clients where they're at, right? And it's just like, I thought that's where they're at with like their their aptitude, you know, being a little lower than like mine or whatever, right? Mr. Mm -hmm. iMac and dual monitors and, you know, every doodad over here in my, <laughs> my, uh -huh. my HomePod right in front of me kind of thing. But uh, no, um, you know, a lot of folks have been able to, you know, like just adapt. Like, mm -hmm. you know, go to the app, go to your, I mean, do you use Android or iPhone, right? Like go to your app store, download this app, Z-O-O-M, Z-O-O-M, Zoom, it's free, mm -hmm. you know, you know, like here's my phone number to my office. Here's this other number that you're going to put into the box in that software program. You know, mm -hmm. I'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock. If you're not in there by one o five, I'm going to give you a call, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. like, like. Um, with the kids that I see for like our walk-in clinic or whatever, right? Like they know how to, you know, they know what, how to use it. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, look at that. It's so cute. So, we're, so this is what, <laughs> just so people know what you're referring to. So this is kind of like a little, the guide that you created and I know you have it in English yeah. and Spanish and it's very, very user-friendly, very accessible, very easy. And, and, you know, it's, it's one of the that. things that we do. Who's this handsome guy here? I don't know. That was like twenty pounds ago, man. Like the freaking, like they all my freaking quarantine videos, huh? like, But you know, it's oh one God. of the things as social workers that you know that we do is is kind of break down barriers to accessibility for for a yeah. lot of different services, and so yeah. I think that's but, awesome. Yeah, but to answer the second part of your question or whatever, right? It's just like you know, one of my favorite questions to ask folks that may or may not have had mental health services before is just like, do you know what mental health is? It's like, well, I think so, or maybe, or no, or whatever, right? You know, like, you know, um, well, mental health is like feeling good, right? It's like, yeah, you're kind of almost there. You know, it's, it's just like mm -hmm. eliciting that kind of response, that open ended question. It's like, you know, what, you know, what do you, how would you define mental health? And, and again, you know, sometimes it's filling in a lot of gaps. Sometimes it's feeling like, like, oh, okay, they know pretty well, you know, pretty well, right? And right. again, you know, my whole approach is like mind, body, and spirit, right? Like, like, like the spiritual mm -hmm. component, I think, is like super important, right? Whether you have a religious affiliation or not. Um, but you know, you know, helping out clients with with, with kind of like understanding that it's just like emotions and physical, and then like spiritual, your place in the universe, or your relationship with God, or however you want to look at that, whether you're you know atheist or you know or, or believe in God or what have you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just like one of those things where like you know folks do like that, and I, I, I you know, like I said, I, I'm very privileged. I love my job. <laughs> 
that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so kind of, um, moving it, uh, moving it forward a little in your chronology. So, so I don't know if it's moving it forward, but we kind of started touching on it with the, the tool that you're describing and that we showed here on screen. But the, the way that I came to know about you and, and I think part of, of what you do and who you are is, is that connection with, between social work and technology. So was that something that you had from the get go or you developed it along the way or, 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 I mean, describe, just describe your, that interest with, cause you, you are known in the, in the online world in some way to some people as social work tech. And so, well, that's all well and good, man. It's just like, I'm not like these academic folks. Like, uh, uh, like Jonathan Singer has a really wonderful podcast and he's all into like the, 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 uh-huh. um, him. And then like Melanie Sage is another one. Um, that, um, and then, uh, Nancy Smith or whatever, they're all into like technology and social work, but like on an academic level of that, I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not so much like on the academic level. I'm more like delete Facebook, you know, and here, let me, uh, <laughs> You know, l- let me share this video of Ocasio Cortez roasting Mark Zuckerberg, right? Mm. But like, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> trying to get everybody to delete their Facebook kind of thing, right? Mm. Um, but like, so no, like social about- work advocacy embedded within your. You're, how you're rolling right now with this stuff. Yeah, a little bit, man. It's, you know, it's just, you know, like I said, not like academic, kind of like maybe field type of work or what have you. But the thing mm-hmm. about uh, w- with, um, so it in March 2020 or whatever, right? I was like, we're watching some movie in one of my like MSW classes. And I was like, I wonder if socialworktech.com is available. And sure enough, man, like it was. And so I registered that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, I did a trade with some guy that had social work tech, the Twitter name for like mm-hmm. some conference that he was going to, it was just going to be a one and done type of thing or whatever. It's like, like, mm-hmm. please let me have that. Right. <laughs> so, you know, um, and, and that's how, you know, that's how I accumulated like the, the identity for the empire. Right. But um, <laughs> as far as <laughs> the empire, no, but mm-hmm. with, with social work tech or whatever, right, it's just like, you know, uh, uh, I like writing like practical guides or reflections or what have you about like technology and like, you know, why certain things are good or why, you know, certain things are, you know, to be avoided. Um, for example, right. Like I haven't done an article yet, but I think like, you know, social, you know, if, if design is a good tool to have in your arsenal, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, you know, learning like maybe like three tenants of design, like, you know, uh, spacing and kerning and like font choice or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can make flyers, you know, that look pretty and that people want to go to your group kind of thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, so, so that, that kind of stuff, like with tech or whatever, right? Or like, you know, like the ethical implications of like having a Facebook account or Instagram account or Twitter account, you know? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think, you know, out, you know, outside of, you know, like the, the, the work day or whatever, right? Like, you know, I want to like not social work, right? You know, I want to. You know, I want to look on Twitter and see what Ocasio Cortez is doing. I want to see what Elizabeth Warren is doing. I want to see what like these podcasters from those political shows are, mm-hmm. you know, are up to, or what like the news of the day is, or what have you, right? Um, or like today, you know, like Texas is like thirty degrees <laughs> below zero or something like that. You know, I just want to see what's <laughs> doing or whatever, right? Yeah. You know, um, and it's just like one of those things. Where it's like, you know, I don't mess. You know, I don't mess around with people. I don't. I don't talk to people or what have you. Like, but Facebook, man, is just like has been a sti- you know sticky thing ever since i've had facebook and i've been in the profession so Mm -hmm. one of the things man is just like you know the the code of ethics says like don't look up your clients right and one of the things i did before they they made that policy or whatever right is like i would sometimes look up clients or whatever just to block them so i didn't have to have that awkward conversation later Mm. you know and that'd be like like a lot of clients or whatever right <laughs> you know not look at their photos not care about like what they're up to or whatever right but it's just like mm. one of those things where like like that's what i did to kind of like for self-preservation <laughs> you know it's just like and that's yeah. you know that's it that's me being ethical you know and, and trying to do as little harm as possible and trying you know just mm-hmm. you know and, and just knowing that like one small slip or whatever right like you know yeah and it's uh, only uh, recently that the the nasw even has come out with some guidelines for social media and technology yeah, within the past, yeah within the past couple of years so really from let's what was facebook 2006 2005 whatever 2003, that was like, bro, man. like if you had a dot edu account 2003 oh yeah so <laughs> so you know f- f- just imagine from 03 yeah. to like you know the past couple of years we've just been kind of surfing this and riding this and figuring out yeah. you know but and no archive, consistency in, yeah. in organizations or you know, 
and I'm definitely a different person than I was in 2003 or whatever, right? But I don't want you, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. remember I had a MySpace pad, and for like the longest time, my thumbnail was like me <laughs> chugging like a bottle of wine with like my long, double the length of the, my quarantine hair right now, right? And it's just like, you know, people change, and that doesn't reflect who I am right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. Even I, I on a local level here, I, I'm a politician and I'm an elected official here locally. And, you know, one of the things that I had to do as part of my campaign and, and stuff is, is scrub my social media all the way back to 03, 04. And, and exactly like you say, like, I'm not the same person that I was back then. And luckily I never, I never put yeah. anything too crazy, but yeah. certainly there was stuff there that I wouldn't put now because yeah. I'm not who I was then, but you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's a new yeah. world that we're in just from a personal yeah. perspective, but also a social yeah. work perspective and how we deal with, you know, clients, social media yeah. and, and all that stuff. It's yeah. It's, and and uh, the other thing too, you know, like, like as far as like, you know, like my, my, you know, with using technology comes with like a lot of responsibility, a lot of things you should consider about. Cause like, like I think on my wifi or whatever, right. I was looking up like stuff on schizophrenia. Right. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, right. I'm browsing Reddit and it's telling me about like this new schizophrenia, like one shot a month, you know, like medicine that I should talk to my doctor about. I'm like, that is freaking creepy. You know? <laughs> it might be like <laughs> totally not related, but it's just like, uh-huh. like, like, yo, I mean, like somebody's, you know, looking at my online behavior and analyzing it and trying to throw like stuff mm-hmm. for me to buy. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I think that's just yeah. like super creepy, you know? Yeah. Like, and which it's is, creepy, you know, like for, uh, for us adults that have had, you know, that have some experience or, you know, some seasoning, mm-hmm. but you think about, you know, the kids that we work with, these young kids or my own daughters, like the way that they see social media, the way they navigate things and the way they kind of relate social media and, and the digital world to the real world is just so different than, than what we see. And yet, you know, we get them in as clients. We they have still issues that we need to deal with. So as older social workers, and I'll call us older at this point, but you know, as older <laughs> social workers, it's it's like another challenge that we have to learn and grow and develop yeah. to to be able to to work yeah. with that. Yeah, I mean, like the other thing too that's helpful or whatever is just like a, you know, for for social workers now is just like learning what the current trends are or whatever, right? Like, what's a meme? You know, like okay, mm-hmm. you know, somebody twenty years older than me may know what a meme is or whatever, right? Because like they see it on their Facebook page, but mm-hmm. doesn't know like 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 you know, doesn't know oh that's what it's called or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or for example, like TikTok or whatever, right? Like what's the you know what what is TikTok? What are like the benefits? What are the you know like like the da- potential dangers for it? Kind of you know and, and mm-hmm. you know just like learning like the new trends that are that are popping up or whatever so yeah, yeah. you know and i, I think that's mostly helpful especially yeah. when you're working with younger kids or whatever right <clears throat> exactly and, and you know i just um to take to take the conversation conversation back a little bit though i think uh you made a good point about when we're talking about social work and technology i i have found the exact same thing because i'm familiar with and have kind of very, very lightly interacted with the individuals that you mentioned through social media. And they are very prolific in their use of technology and, and, and social work. But it is a lot of it is kind of from an academic perspective, which mm-hmm. we need and which is awesome. But the, the things that I've been interested in and the things that I've done have been, I think, similar to you, kind of more practical, kind of more that, you know, workers in the field might be able to use as as tools or or ways to kind of i wouldn't say shortcuts but ways to to um you know do their work and and be more efficient and so like the the website that i have the one that i do is social work mentor and so similar to how you've kind of built yours mine is you know it's just a it's a collection of different tools that social workers can can get on their cell phones or, or from their, you know, from their desk or whatever it is and, and different Mm -hmm. things that people can use while out in the field, um, you know, just to make their work easier. And so I think these types of tools, when we're talking about Uh um, social work and and technology, it's for me, without shortchanging the academic technology piece for me in my experience, these are the kinds of tools that I think people like you or myself or others that are on this cusp of social work and technology can look to continue to develop things that workers can, can, can really utilize and it's very accessible for them. 
And so, yeah, and you, you know, and all that stuff is cool, man. I, I dig it. Um, I, I like that you can print it out and use it because, like, ultimately, pen and paper is like the best. You know, it is the bee's knees. I freaking love pen and paper. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, most most guy like has this thirty dollar um, like Evernote branded um like note planner right and i think that they discontinued it and before they did man i got like the last 10 uh, you know so like mm-hmm. for the rest of my life i have enough of the, my favorite planner ever you know to last me <laughs> <laughs> you know because like you know again you know it's just like i've used like stuff like evernote or dropbox or whatever to like file stuff and it's just like mm-hmm. that stuff just gets lost or i can just you know like which folder in evernote did i put it in as just like whereas like i can just thumb through my notebook like oh that's what i was working on you know cool yeah um you know, and I think saying- it's important that we do have a kind of a diversity yeah. of tools or, or, yeah. or, you know, ways that we, that we have stuff accessible because I, like, I'm the opposite. I, I do not want anything pen and paper. Like I want yeah. all my files, everything digital. Yeah. I don't, I'm just not, I, it doesn't, uh, yeah. it doesn't work for me. And so, you know, knowing <laughs> well, that there are, are social workers, just individuals, forget social yeah. workers. There's people that have different needs. And so we should yeah. provide the tools that they need in whatever yeah. format works for them. Cause at the end yeah. of the day, it's how is the end user going to be impacted by, you know, what they have accessible mm-hmm. to them are the families yeah. and children going to be able to benefit from that. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, like, like when I'm face to face with clients or whatever, right. Like a long time ago, pre pandemic, right. It's just like, mm-hmm. you know, I scribble notes like on a piece of paper or whatever. Cause like the tablet is just way too distracting. Yeah, and, you know, in those instances, able, yeah, I, I'm yeah, you know, that, so, that. so that, you know, that, you know, that, <laughs> you know that, that's that, that's that's my real world application of uh-huh. pen and paper, and then you know, like throw in like the freaking shred box, you know, like when you're done, you know, so yeah, yeah, there's some stuff tried and true yeah. that. I mean, it's hard to maybe the 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 younger generation will will find an effective mm-hmm. way. Maybe they found yeah. it already, and I just don't know about it. But some of the work <laughs> that we do, in my mind at least, is is. Wow. It, it remains old school, quote unquote, and <laughs> and if it's effective in that way. And you could digitize stuff if you want to after the fact. Oh, yeah. You, those dynamics of sitting face to face with the client <laughs> and the, yeah. you know, the the distraction that people have talked about about looking away to use a tablet or a laptop. Yeah. It's not the same as an interaction with pen and paper when you're talking to someone. Yeah. So, hey, I could be you wrong. Talk about digit. Yeah, and you talk about digitizing, man. One of the best things ever is just like if you work at a place that has like one of those like super expensive copiers where you can scan stuff to PF. That's uh-huh. cool because like, you know I don't know how many handouts like at different conferences or whatever I get or whatever, right? And all that mm. just adds and adds and adds up or whatever, right? But if I can just mm. scan it to a digital copy, throw in a folder, you know, like in a uh, OneDrive, which is Microsoft's version of Dropbox or whatever, right? Like I'll have it yeah. forever. I can digitally hoard that way, you know, and take up like you know, like megabytes of space and not instead of like physical space. Like, yeah, that's, I'm a huge proponent of that. (laughs) That's, that's totally like, (laughs) that's totally one of the drivers behind the social work mentor site that I have and things Mm -hmm. that I do It's because I'm always, I was always just so as a person who's not really, you know, pen and paper kind of, kind of person, Mm -hmm. I was always frustrated by like going to a conference and getting some you know, great material and, and having a getting impacted by this stuff. And then two, three weeks down the road, I want to use it, but I have to go through this four inch thick binder and find it. And I never, <laughs> it, it just, that connection was never made. So right. on my side and, and what I try to do in some of the stuff that I do is make mm-hmm. that stuff accessible, This whether it's a PDF digitized or whatever it mm-hmm. is, but in such a way that you know, it's it's maybe a couple taps of a finger or something that someone can access it and and use it. Yeah. So when we go to a conference or whatever, it's not just, you know, in our mind for a few days and then gone in that file cabinet full of binders from trainers. It's it's, you know, something we can use. Yeah, and it's just like like, like when you're saying like it, it's just wonderful when it comes to like the DSM, right? It's just yeah. like I have like I have a ver- I have two versions of the DSM, right? One that's broken up into chapters and just like one that's like the 600 page file or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like the the version that I have with like the broken up chapters, like oh wait a minute, what's you know what is the childhood depression? You know, I, I think it's like PMDD or something like that. You know, like the dysregulation one like which one's that well you know like i can like you know mm-hmm. like you say easily find it load up what you need and then like you know like oh okay this person does or does not meet the criteria you know so yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah so so to kind of as we 
we've been here almost an hour now. It's flown by. But um, <laughs> so to kind of, I guess, bring it now to to here and now to today, um, where mm-hmm. do you, I guess, where do you kind of find yourself now in terms of looking at the next five or 10 years and, and what are you, what are you working on? What do you hope to work on? And, and, you know, what's, what's in the, in the forefront? Um, or- well, I, I, I've been thinking about like, not so much like a job venue change or whatever. Right. But like, it's, it's stagnation, man. It's just like, might as well be death kind of thing. Right. And it's just like, mm-hmm. You know, like always moving forward and upward is, you know, how I try to be. But sometimes it just feels like, you know, with like the, the tire spinning in mud kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it's funny that it's funny that you mentioned this. I didn't, you know, like I, I knew about this. I've been freaking out about this interview for like the last week or whatever. Right. But not thinking about it, like, <laughs> but not thinking yeah. about it or whatever. Right. Um, I was thinking like, oh, like I need to go get that EMDR training. Right. Um, mm-hmm. and, and EMDR for folks that don't know is uh, eye movement, de- desensitization and re. I, mispronounce that word and reprocessing it's like this mm-hmm. like um it's a it's this therapy technique that is helpful for folks that are you know th- that have like ptsd and trauma and all that um mm-hmm. i just read the intro and apparently it's moved to like ocd and depression and anxiety so i'm like okay cool i'm stoked to be spending the i think 700 dollars. i'm not sure if that's for like one weekend or, or both you know or, or or one day of the weekend or or, or the whole weekend or what have you, but no, I'm mm-hmm. just, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to get that, that certification and that training, because I think a lot of my clients would benefit from that. Um, other stuff too, is just like, for me, man, it's just like, I, as far as like professionally or whatever, right? Like I'm, I'm okay with where I'm at. I'm just, you know, trying to, you know, just take care of myself outside of that. You know, I got mm-hmm. like my Apple watch and like the Apple fitness and I got a bunch of weights gathering dust that I just got like post Christmas, which I'm going to like freaking, you know, start, you know, like doing more. Um, but no, it's just like, for me, it's just like trying to, you know, every single day that I wake up, try to be a, like a better person, try to, you know, l- you know, try to exercise, you know, take my meds, um, get to work on time, you know, empower my clients and empower my coworkers, try, you know, try to be a good, you know, try to be a better person than I was the day before. Is every day a home run? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no, I mean, it's not all peaches and sunshine, man, but like out of great discomfort comes growth and, you know, so, yeah. you know, you got to take your lumps to get, you know, get to the next step. But, uh, yeah. And no, I think I one, just, one thing that you alluded to earlier is, is, you know, that I think we all have to recognize and keep in mind is that yes, we're social workers and, and our identity as social workers may bleed into our personal lives of, as well, but we also are just people that are interested in politics or being healthy or, or whatever it is that, you know, yeah. that we're interested in. And, and, and so it's important to keep that balance and not be 24 seven social worker. I know yeah. some jobs, people feel like they have to be that, but yeah. I mean, to the extent possible, yeah. just finding that balance is crucial too. Yeah. Yeah. And for me though, it's just like, it's not so much working towards happiness. It's just, you know, you know, I think happiness is just like a really far-fetched fantasy, right? It's just about being mm-hmm. content and fulfilled, you yeah. know, about, yeah. you know, about, that is the goal, you know, did I, you know, is my job, am I doing good with the skills that I have been blessed with? You know, am I mm-hmm. doing, you know, am I doing what I, um, what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I miserable? <laughs> I don't know. Do I need yeah. to change the scenery? Do I need, you know, mm-hmm etc cetera, etc cetera. you know and it's just, it's just like one of those things it's just like you know working towards feeling content and again taking care of myself is like super important too mm. um and i'm talking about like treat yourself or anything like that i'm talking about like you know trying to get it up you know your eight hours of sleep you know uh mm. balance of like you know like the stuff you put in your body like caffeine and all that you know mm. so you know making yeah, sure the people, stuff that your body needs you know that you put into it you know uh, go ahead yeah and people you know in this profession we always talk about the the satisfaction that one feels you know when you work with an individual or a family and you see progress or you see success and you know that that's often used when we're talking about pay and compensation and yeah. you know we're paid also in in what we see from the people that we work with which is yeah. definitely true but we also need to see you know, like you mentioned, our own satisfaction, our own wellness. And, and, you know, if we don't, the, the old saying of, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. I mean, it's, it's always so true. And unless we're intentionally paying attention to what we need to for ourselves, we're, we're not going to be as effective as we can be for, for those that we're, that we're serving. Um, So that's, I think, a very important kind of last thing that, that you, that you bring up here. So, 
that all being said, I don't want to, I want to be respectful of your time and, and, you know, we have our jobs still and our families and stuff. So, so we want to be, be, you know, attentive to that. So is there any, are there any last things that you kind of want to leave people with or, or send people um, to yeah, something I, that you're doing? Um, I guess check out socialworktech.com to see what I'm up to. Um, if I ever update it again, you know, because I, I'm happy with whatever I put up there. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the things I do want to say is this, which I kind of alluded to, but, you know, I talk about therapy, I talk about medicines and all that. And it's just like one of those things is not to end it with a bummer, but to end it with like in a, in a good place. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't realize that for like most of my life I had depression and, and, you know, reading in a textbook or whatever, right. Um, you know, the diagnostic criteria is just like, oh, this looks familiar, bro. Just like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I <laughs> oy. but um, for, for folks that, you know, like that think that they might have something going on like that, or even anxiety, like uh, I'm more depression than anxiety kind of thing, right? But for some folks, you know, that are like in denial about it, um, you know, school will stress you out. <laughs> school will, <laughs> will, you know, school will deprive you of sleep and sometimes of your happiness or whatever, right? But, you know, you do the sacrifice to get, you know, your diploma and all that. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it, though, is just if you're, you know, if, if you feel like, you know, something's off, like really talk to your doctor or talk to somebody to get that help. Um, my hope is that, you know, you are able to, you know, like through the Obamacare, you know, possibly get um, like coverage, even like through like your Medicaid, Medi-Cal, in, in California, we call Medicaid, Medi-Cal, right? Um, or, or something like that, you know, just, just to get checked out with that, because I got to tell you one thing, it's just like with medicine, um, it has helped me tremendously with, with dealing with the stuff that, that I've carried for, for my entire life. Um, and I mentioned all of that, man, because it's just, and again, not to bomb anybody out or anything like that, but it was just, it was like the best thing I ever did for myself. Um, and it, it, it really helps out when talking to people that are adverse to medicine, right? To taking medicine. It's just like, mm -hmm. it's not about turning into a zombie. It's not about drugging you up. It's not about changing your personality. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes your brain is missing a chemical or three and, you know, like, like and, and uh, that's what happens. You know, it mm -hmm. is, you know, as good as you try to take care of yourself, exercise, you know, if, if that's not, if that's not helping or whatever, right? Like, you know, really go get some professional advice because, you know, physician heal thyself, social worker, social work yourself sometimes, bro. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think that's a bummer at all. I think that's an important positive note to kind of end this on yeah. and, and it's in the realm of taking care of ourselves. And, you know, this podcast, the intention behind it is to, to share people's journeys and, and have people learn from that, particularly newer and, and, newer social workers or those thinking about getting into the field. And so you just emphasize the point that, you know, in this profession, it, it's very rewarding, very challenging. And, and, you know, we need to always be taking care of ourselves in order to, to maintain a, a healthy profession, uh, professional career. So I want to thank you, Ignacio, for, <laughs> for joining me here on the podcast. I, I had a great time. I learned uh, now I know about you other than just your, your logo and your, your social media <laughs> presence. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I want to thank you for all that you do oh. with the populations you work with and, oh. and, and the work that you've done. I'm excited to what's to come for you. I know, I know we'll still yeah. be in touch after this. Yeah, but no, and, and one other thing too, I appreciate what you're doing. You know, um, I appreciate the the stuff that you're putting out there to help other clinicians. You know, get, you know, look at social work and see the ups and the the downs and and everything else that that they need to know. Because again, it's just like you and I have been through like our you know our downs, but we've also been to glory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for sure. All right. Well. Thanks again, everybody, for watching this and stay tuned. Follow Social Work Mentor and Social Work Tech. If you follow Social Work Mentor, you'll be notified when we have these next podcasts. I have a few more lined up with some other very interesting social workers and professionals here in the helping profession. So I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching and take care, everybody.